You, um, you feel good? And remarkably, the answer might actually be yes. That's the goal. You might want to live long, but even more importantly, you want to live well. So what is happiness? We all have our own unique definition of it. Some of you probably know exactly what it means to you, and others are yet to discover it. I finally figured out what happiness means to me. But before I tell you, I want to take you with me on my journey towards self-discovery. So let's go back to the start. Growing up, I had two main passions, music and movement. I was a very health-conscious kid. I had a keen interest in science, nutrition, and I started doing push-ups and crunches at a very young age, and I actually thought I had muscles back then. I also had a huge passion for music. When I was 12 years old, my parents bought me this CD, Jack Johnson. As soon as I heard the first song, I knew exactly what I wanted to do with the rest of my life. I wanted to become the next Jack Johnson. So my parents bought me an acoustic guitar. I taught myself how to play every song on the album by ear until I thought I was a master. So the next step to becoming the next Jack Johnson was these, an electric guitar and an amp. This was an eye-opening moment for me because I plugged the guitar into the amp and I started to play the songs that I thought I was a master at, and I quickly realized that I sucked. You see, the amp had exposed all of my weaknesses. But instead of giving up, I practiced every day with the amp plugged in until I turned those weaknesses into strengths, and it worked. So this is what I looked like in my early 20s. I was playing gigs all over Sydney, selling tickets to my own shows at live music venues. I signed with one of the biggest modeling agencies in Australia. I graduated from university as an exercise and sports scientist, and I was playing high-level sport. So that's what I looked like, but this is how I felt. Invincible. I truly felt like I had superpowers. Life was just too good to be true. But then things began to change. All of a sudden, when I was 22 years old, I started to notice some signs and symptoms. Chronic sinusitis and tonsillitis, to the point where I needed surgery. After my operation, I couldn't sing anymore, so I waved goodbye to my music career. I had an unquenchable thirst, frequent overnight urination, insatiable hunger, and rapid weight loss. I lost 13 kilos in just a few weeks. My rugby coach kindly pointed out that I was by far the skinniest guy on the team. Despite how much I was eating and how much I was training in the gym, I couldn't gain weight. But the one sign that stood out amongst all of them was the level of exhaustion that I was facing. I'll never forget the day that I fell asleep face to face in a job interview where I was trying to get a job as an exercise physiologist. I was sticking a pen into my leg under the table. I was digging my nail into my thighs. I just couldn't keep my eyes open. That same day, I fell asleep driving home in a tunnel. I woke up inches from a wall, swerved back into my lane. When I finally got out the other side, I slept in my car on the side of the road for half an hour. So I knew something was seriously wrong. So I asked my parents, who were both doctors, to send me for blood tests, and the results came back with many red flags, all of which were pointing towards one thing, type 1 diabetes. So I went to a diabetes clinic, and I met with an endocrinologist, a professor, a doctor, and I was basically told, that it looked like my immune system was attacking my pancreas and that one day I might stop producing insulin and become a type 1 diabetic. But I was told it could be five days, five months, five years, or maybe not even at all. But I was sent home with a glucose meter and told to measure my blood sugar for a couple of weeks and then come back and we'll do a checkup. So I did that and the results seemed pretty good. My numbers were quite normal, so I thought, you know, confident young man, I'd beaten it. There's no way I was going to get diabetes. So we go back for the checkup. And the doctor mentions that they've just received a brand new glucose monitor if I'd like to try it. So I said, sure. We opened it out of the box, pricked my finger, took a blood sample, and all of a sudden, the energy in the room completely changed. The number on the meter came back and it said 16. The normal range is about four to six. And my dad was sitting next to me, he was in complete denial, so he said, can you please go get a, a meter that actually works? That one's clearly broken. My son doesn't have diabetes. We got a new meter, the result was the same, 16. So that was the day I was diagnosed with type 1 diabetes. Sitting next to my dad, an eye surgeon who had dedicated his entire career 
to saving the sight of people with suffering from diabetes. Now his own son had just been diagnosed with the same disease that he had watched rob the vision of so many of his patients. It was without a doubt the darkest day of my life. These were some of the, uh, the, the feelings and words going through my head. It was the first time I understood the phrase, the world caved in, because I literally saw it with my own two eyes. The world around me turned to rubble. All that was left was myself, my dad, the doctor, and my new diagnosis as a type 1 diabetic. Why me? What did I do to deserve this? It felt like I'd been sentenced for life. I was told I'd need to inject insulin for the rest of my life. Six injections a day, 10 finger pricks a day. I was told the short-term complications of overdosing on insulin, seizure, coma, death. And the long-term complications of diabetes, kidney failure, blindness, limb amputation. But then the very next day, something amazing happened, what I like to call a life-changing moment. I woke up in the morning, and I ate my usual breakfast, and my blood sugar shot up to 25, five times the normal range. Keep in mind, I wasn't taking insulin at this stage. I then went off to the gym, my happy place, and I did my usual workout for 60 minutes. It was a full-body workout, training every muscle, push-ups, pull-ups, burpees, squats, you name it. After my workout, I tested my blood sugar, and this was a jaw-dropping moment for me. My blood sugar was five. So it dropped from 25, five times the normal range, to five in just 60 minutes of exercise. So this was the first time in my life that I could truly quantify just how good exercise really is for you. I had an objective insight into my health. This moment gave me an incredible sense of empowerment and control and responsibility to look after myself and take care of my health. So that's how I discovered the first pillar of my five-pillar approach, exercise. And I always say, exercise is a form of medicine that we can freely and happily administer to ourselves. So the experiment continued, and the cool part was I got to be the, the lead scientist and the subject of my own experiment. So over the next few years, I discovered the other four pillars of my five-pillar approach, nutrition. This is all about building a healthy, lifelong relationship with real, whole food in its natural form, just as nature intended. Daily living. I love this quote. Enjoy the simple things, because one day you'll look back and realize they were the big things. Within this pillar, I have what I call the six S's. Sleep, quality, and quantity. Stress management. The goal is not to be stress-free, the goal is to be stress-fit. Sun, getting a healthy daily dose of sunlight and spending time in nature. Steps, spending more time on our feet and less time sitting down. Smile, finding things in life that actually bring you joy and happiness and seek those things. And of course, socialize, the importance of human connection, bonding, face-to-face -face communication, spending more time looking into people's eyes than screens and devices. The mindfulness pillar. This is all about being conscious, present, and aware in each and every moment so that you can extract the most out of life and live a life aligned with your values and your purpose. And of course, insulin and blood sugar control. Not just to prevent the, the very frightening short-term and long-term complications of diabetes, but also to prevent, reverse, and manage a whole array of chronic diseases. So this led me to create Drew's Daily Dose, which is my way of inspiring and empowering people to lead a happy and healthy life just like me. By combining my background as a qualified health professional and my own experience in managing diabetes, I felt like I had a duty or a responsibility to share everything that I've learned along the way. Diabetes has taught me so much about myself and the world, but there's one lesson that stands out amongst them all, and it is this. Just like the amp that my parents gave me when I was a kid, life gave me an amp of its own, diabetes. You see, adversity is an amplifier. It will make you more of who you already are. It will expose all of your strengths and all of your weaknesses. 
So if you are a positive person who moves through life with a sense of optimism and, and passion and aspiration, it'll make you more of those things. But if you're a negative person who, who moves through life with a sense of pessimism and, and entitlement or, or a victim mentality, it'll make you more of those things too. So adversity really can make you or break you. Either way, it's inevitable. Whether it manifests in the form of a chronic disease like it did for me, or a relationship breakdown, financial turmoil, loss of a job, loss of a loved one, it's giving you an opportunity to see yourself through a lens that you may never have been able to see yourself through before. It's giving you an opportunity to examine yourself under a microscope to see what you're really made of, deep down in your core, your values, your beliefs, your work ethic, and most importantly, your true character. They say adversity doesn't build character, it reveals it, and that couldn't be more true. Now, the best part is, if you like what you see, you can keep, keep going that way, build upon your strengths. If you don't like what you see, you have a chance to change into the person that you've always wanted to be. So we need to see adversity as synonymous with opportunity. So after being diagnosed with diabetes, I decided to live my life every day with my adversity amp plugged in, the volume up high, so that I could turn my weaknesses into strengths. Just in case you need a proof that adversity is an amplifier, here's a photo of me amplified. So, bad things are going to happen in life, there's just no denying it. And it won't always be your fault, but how you react is always your responsibility. So as I stand here before you today, I'm truly living my dreams. I I'm an exercise physiologist, diabetes educator, sports scientist, but most importantly, I'm a happy and healthy guy, thriving with diabetes, not just surviving with diabetes. Diabetes has given me more than it's taken from me. It's pushed me to do things in life that I probably would never have done, like this. I was a contestant on season two of Australian Ninja Warrior. I was the first person with type 1 diabetes to hit the buzzer, and I missed out on a spot in the grand final by just one place. It was a very proud moment for me that I proved to myself that diabetes isn't the only obstacle that I'm able to conquer in life. Spoiler alert, I didn't become the next Jack Johnson, but I didn't give up on my music career either. I did record a, uh, a single which I've put on Spotify and iTunes, and I have a music video on YouTube. So what is happiness? Well, to me, happiness is not a life without pain and struggle and adversity. Happiness is the feeling of fulfillment that you get when you overcome the inevitable adversity that life is going to throw at us. If you don't figure out what happiness means to you, you'll be forced to live a life controlled by somebody else's definition. So take the time to figure out what it means to you. I'll let you in on a little secret. There is a shortcut to happiness. Uh, and if this doesn't work for you, then I'm afraid you should probably go see your doctor immediately. Rescue a dog. <laughs> the, the amount of happiness that my dog gives, gives me, I can't even put into words. And not just because of the way he looks, but the way he sounds. Have a listen to this. So you think, you think you're excited to go to the beach? That's real excitement for the beach. <laughs> now, I realize not everyone can rescue a dog, so if your circumstances don't allow, then of course you can just follow my dog on Instagram, Dennis. <laughs> that way you're guaranteed your daily dose of happiness. There's his handle, a daily dose of Dennis. So on a serious note, I'll leave you with this. Always remember, adversity is an amplifier. Do not fear it, respect it. Do not reject it, embrace it. But most importantly, do not ignore it, listen to it. Thank you. <laughs>